I'm Mark Dredge and I've just travelled all around the globe looking for the world's best beers. Uh, the idea was to try and find different beers, different breweries and tell the most interesting and important stories from the world of beer. Um, and I'm going to go over a few of those beers now. So we're in a London pub and we're going to drink cast beer. This is Britain's drink. Um, the thing about cast beer is that actually it takes a lot of involvement from the pub to make it right. So the brewer will make the beer, they'll deliver it to the pub, but it's not quite ready yet. The pub actually has to look after it themselves, they have to, they have to get the, the, the beer into the perfect condition, ready to be able to sell it. Um, and when it does come out, it, you can get the most elegant, most balanced, most incredible um, beers from, from the cask. Um, it's also important because we're in the pub and, and beer is the most social of drinks. Um, and that's the thing I've probably learnt most during my travels around the world is that we share beers uh, and that's really, really important to, to actually share them with people and, and share the moment. And the moment is, for me, way more memorable than actually the beer itself. You know, I can think about all the trips I've been on, but I'll actually remember where I am and who I was with and how I felt at the time more than I remember the actual taste of the drink. So that, for me, is a really important element of, of beer drinking. So this is Orval. This is a beer brewed at a Trappist monastery and there are six Trappist monasteries in Belgium. I've got a really new relationship to this beer now because during the research for this book I actually stayed at the monastery and I lived like a monk for a, for a day. Um, I went to prayer with them, I had food uh, that was cooked by them, I got to hear their chanting which is the most incredible sound I've ever heard in this huge monastery building which is just, just a remarkable, remarkable experience. Um, and the beer itself is actually a remarkable experience. It's, um, it's a Belgian parallel, but actually inside each bottle they add a small amount of wild yeast uh, and that continues to work within the bottle. Um, so over time that beer changes and what that means is every time you drink this beer it tastes a little bit different um, and that just makes it um, it's just a really interesting beer. You know, it's never exactly the same and there's something remarkable about that. Um, and there's something remarkable, in fact, about all of the Belgian monastic beers, um, particularly the Trappist ones. You know, they've, they've got this wonderful romance about them, and discovering those monasteries was, was a really great experience. This is a beer from Sierra Nevada Brewery from Chico in California, and they started in 1980. They're one of the first American craft breweries to start. And actually, ever since then, for 35 years, they've been at the forefront of craft brewing. Um, the thing which really sets them apart is their use of hops, I think. Um, and they used a hop called Cascade in a beer, that, uh, in their Pale Ale beer. And it's got this amazing grapefruity character. No one had tasted this in beer before Sierra Nevada really used it. Um, and that really changed the tasting profile of beers uh, in, in the US and then since then in the world. Um, it's a natural step from Pale Ale to India Pale Ale, IPA. Um, and this is their Torpedo beer. Um, IPA accounts for 27% of all American craft beers, which is an astonishing volume. Um, and I think the key thing about IPA is, one, it's got this amazing hop uh, profile, and two, it shows people just how different beer can be. The, the beers that they're, perhaps their dad or their granddad used to grow up drinking, they can taste this in a, a beer in a completely new flavour profile. Big, full-on flavours, but really, really interesting. And that, for me, is an exciting part of, of craft beer. You might be surprised by this one, but I'm actually opening a Budweiser. And it was one of the most interesting beers that I wrote about through the whole of this process. Um, and actually it's one of the most important, I think, in the history of brewing. Um, Adolphus Busch was the brewer behind this beer and he was one of the most pioneering men in the whole of the beer industry. Um, he saw that he had to sell beer outside of his hometown because there were a lot of breweries nearby. Um, and he built national railways, he built um, ice houses to keep his beer cold along the way and to keep those cold, he would harvest ice, he installed bottling lines before anyone else did. Um, he would pasteurize his beer to keep it fresh. And no one else was doing this at the time. He really was the first person to do these things. Um, today we know it as this ubiquitous mass market brand. Um, but actually that in itself is a remarkable story because Budweiser is actually brewed in 50 different breweries around the world. Every single bottle of Bud or glass of Bud that you drink tastes the same. Now some people might sneer at that, but actually I think that in a, it, as itself as an achievement is an incredible thing. It's very, very hard to brew a beer like Budweiser and to make it always taste exactly the same. Um, and I think it should be celebrated rather than, um, rather than sneered upon. Um, Budweiser is definitely one of the most important beers ever brewed and it's definitely one of the most interesting stories in the world of beer. Thanks for watching and whether you prefer a beer brewed in a small Belgian monastery or a bottle of Budweiser, for me the most interesting thing is that there are so many stories out there when you're looking for the best beer in the world.